Amos chapter 8. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me what we've read so far. And behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he, God said, Amos, what seest thou? I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. Get that? It's going to come up. It's important. It's going to come up. I will not again pass by them anymore. All right. Reaping and sowing. Basket of summer fruit would apply. It's been gathered. And God's like, hasn't been much fruit. Fruit's not that good. I'll try. Jesus told that parable. He came up to the tree and said, there's no fruit. He said, well, let me dung it. Let me fertilize it. Israel is not producing the fruit that God wants. The church today, the fruit is just worldly, carnal. And the songs of the temple, Israel, shall be howlings in that day. Now pay attention in that day. All right, this is when Nineveh is going to come. I mean, in Assyria is going to come and attack. But this is also going to be a time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. In that day. You got double application. You got historical and you got prophecy coming. Listen, the times of that temple were songs, were pleasures. Notice he says temple. That's in Jerusalem. We've been doing with Israel north. Saith the Lord God. We'll see that in a moment. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. You know, put the body over there. Remember we read about the, the uncle and the ten men in the house. Anybody in there? No, no, no. We buried, we burned them all. Don't want to mention the name of the Lord. Hear this. O ye that swallow up the needy. There are people that their financial income does not meet the needs of living. Now there's a vast difference between a need and a want. A man has need of air, water, and food, and clothing. You can make anything a lodging. So there are people with the bare necessity. And God's just, you know, you, you eat them up, you chew them out. They can't survive. Even to make the poor of the land, Israel, Israel. I mean, go back to verse 2. My people, Israel. Okay, that's important. We're going to use that. To fail. Now, that is, that is the thing of the government. Whether it's king, whether it's president, whether, you know, whatever primary is, you know, we're the government, we're the rich people, you're the low class. And if you're going to make a dollar, we're going to tax you on it. And we're going to see inflation in a moment. If we don't tax you on it, we're going to raise the price up. That's current events today. Saying, when will the new moon be gone? That's the Jewish celebration. That's the Jewish month. That's the, the beginning of the month. That was the Sabbath. That we may sell corn. They couldn't sell on the Sabbath. They're like, I wish, I wish the Sabbath would hurry up so I can sell some corn. 
I wish this preacher would hurry up and get here and go, go to the restaurant. I wish he quit this message. I gotta have a cigarette. I don't want to be here. My mama dragged me here. My my wife dragged me here. I don't want. Those be the worship of God. It's supposed to be joy. Remember, we we just saw the the music turning the Halloween. Oh, come on. You know, you ought not to have any business done at a church house. When they had business done at the church house, at the temple, that we're talking about now, Jesus came in and kicked all the tables over. Kicked it over because, you know what? They had pure, unclean activities, as we're going to see now. What we're going to see is the time of Jesus. And today, they were doing this in Nehemiah. Nehemiah threatened, you come back here, I'm, you know, I'm going to bust some jawbone. Okay, okay. And he told me, you shut the gates. And you don't open them until this Sabbath is over. Because this is why we're here, Jeremiah told us. One of the things, we broke the Sabbath. Now remember, we're Israel North. And the Sabbath. That we may set forth wheat. Okay? We want to sell stuff. Making the ephah small. And the shekel great. Now what's that? That is astronomical price for the small things. That's inflation. I'll tell you what it is. I, I worked grocery stores many years. Many different grocery stores. The last one I was working on, I'm not going to give no name. And I was in charge of the canned goods. I'm stocking up the canned goods, and, and I, I love mushrooms. And I open up a case of mushrooms, and I, oh. I put up on the, you know, we have to put the old, the new stuff in the back and the old stuff in the front. And I go to grab the, the, the old, and I look at the, the can is smaller. The amount is smaller, but it's the same price. So, whoever buys up, and I think it was like four of the old cans left, and then I filled it up with the new stuff. Whoever buys those four cans, the next, are going to get smaller mushroom can size for the same price. That's step. That, God is going to judge retailers and wholesalers when there's deceitful business. So we're going to give the very little amount and we're going to charge the most. I, I think the last time I was in the store, I think I saw one ear of corn, 75 cents. That's ridiculous. You know, we got all this machinery. And how come with all this machinery the prices went up and we're not paying anybody to work. How do you explain that? We're not paying people by the hour to go out and pick ears of corn. We are using a machine, one man per machine. The machine can do much more than what humans do. And yet the prices are more and more. And falsifying the balances by deceit. All right? You go to get a get gallon of gasoline, and you don't get a gallon of gasoline. You go get a foot-long sandwich, and you're getting 11 and a half inches. You go buy a whole tray or a whole box, whatever they call it, of strawberries, and all the ones on the bottom are rotten. How do you know you're getting a thousand sheets in your toilet paper? You ever sit down, I mean, unless you're really <laughs> having diarrhea or stomach problems, you're not going to sit there and count one, two, three. Has anybody ever counted them? I bet you God does. They got this new thing, like I said, I work at a grocery store. This new thing with paper products. 
Five is seven. Three is six. What kind of math is that? I hope you do that when you count my change back. I'm supposed to get a dollar back, give me three, but no, it don't work like that. That we may buy the poor for silver. Hey, they gotta have it. We'll sell it. Astronomical prices, or we'll blame inflation. We got a tax sheet. I think the governor of Florida or something. There's things that he said, you know what, you don't have to, because of the, the economy, whatever, you don't have to pay tax on certain items. You're going to pay taxes somewhere else. I kept trying to tell my wife, uh, she go, you know, everything was free. She got, it, it's not free. It's going to cost somebody something. A needy for a pair of shoes. Now, we saw that expression before. Now, is it literally buying? Hey, you know, I need some sandals. It, it could be. It's something that, you know, it could be. But it also could mean the little thing. Shoes. Well, what are shoes? How much are shoes? Well, back then, not today. Ridiculous prices. They pay for sneakers today. It's a little thing. Yea, and, se and sell the refuge of the wheat. You know, whatever is supposed to be blown away, the chaff. That's worthless. That's nothing. Today, they would use it as a filler. You know, they fill your food with, with junk, with sugar additives and corn syrup then they turn around don't they tell you don't eat that stuff because it's unhealthy well don't put it in there there's only two things there's only two food items that you should really never question what's in them but you just eat them bologna and hot dog everything else should i mean it's amazing not made with artificial where do you get an artificial cherry where do you get an artificial strawberry You're living in a chemical deuce world of food and you wonder why we got all these health problems and cancer. God will God will weigh it out. I got enough faith in God that he'll make everything right. The Lord has sworn by the excellency of Jacob. Now God's swearing by the people of Israel. You know, there are people out there that are religious, God's all finished with Israel. I've never heard God say, I swear by America. I swear by England. You're not going to see God do that. Surely I will never forget any of their works. Now you're in trouble. You see that word, any of their works? Anna had a good testimony. She would pray to the Lord for the people. And she got, believe me, she got the whole baby Jesus. Simeon did his priestly duties waiting for the Messiah to come and got to see the Messiah. All right, that's good work. What about the terrible rotten work? We just talked about people being deceived. What about the guy who is selling... Poor standard of fruits and vegetables to the Hebrew. What about the guy who, who's fixing a, a Hebrew home and he doesn't do it full? There are good works and there are evil works. Shall not the land, the land, the land, that's the land of Israel. Please get that. Please understand that. That's not this land is your land. This land is mine. That's going to come up too in a moment. I'm going to show you how America is this replacement theology. And that's what the pilgrims turned into with the congregational uh, church where they had, I think Massachusetts was called the New Hope, something like that. I forget, I forget what really. And what you know what it was? 
God's all finished with the Jew. We're going to start everything brand new in this new country. And the first thing we're going to do is, we're going to do what God told the Jew. We're going to kill all the Native Americans. And we're going to steal their land. Because after all, that's what God told uh, Joshua. And we're the new Israel. So that's exactly what happened. We're, we're going to tax your land for the church. We're, you know, if you don't tax your land... If you don't pay your taxes to the church, you're called the separatist. We're going to take your animals. We're going to we're going to auction your animals, your property. And listen, that was going on in Norwich, Connecticut. I can take you to the green. Where separatists, before they were called Baptists, lost their property, lost their money, were beaten by the congregational church that stands at that green. In, in the Baptist church or the Christian church. Listen, they were called, they were called Christians. In Annie. They weren't called Baptists. The only, one that, the only thing that was called Baptist was John the Baptist, and he died before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And, and to really get the fact is, when you think about Baptist, you think of baptism. That ought to not be so. You know, I think a bunch of Christians and the blood, not the water, but we'll read on. Shall not the land tremble for this, Israel? Everyone mourn that dwells therein. Everyone's just unhappy because they're being mistreated. There's no joy no more. There's grumpiness. There's attitude. There's is my neighbor being fair to me? I gotta go down to. The, I gotta get one of them fences, you know, the privacy fences. And I don't want to see my neighbor, and I don't want them to see what I'm doing. I, I I hope I can unload this camel, and without him realizing this camel is just, you know, I'm talking about a used car. It, it's got three hoofs in the grave. I can just hurry up and sell it. You know, every time you buy a used car, it's taken as as is. It shouldn't be like that. Because you know what? These used car sales, they take advantage of that. And they take advantage of you. Don't tell me they don't. And it shall rise up holy as a flood. Now, flood is God's judgment. Noah's flood. And there have been floods because of God's judgment. And then there's been natural floods. There's floods right now in Yellowstone Park. And I remember in the spring there would be floods in Norwich and the Atlantic River and all that. That's because all the snow is melted. And it's violent. I remember one time we were in the Atlantic River and there, the, you know, it's just a turn of the, the waterfall disappeared. It's so violent. I remember seeing someone's shed just floating down. They'll take anything and everyone. Everyone. There are people who die in floods. That tsunami that hit Japan. If you ever just go look up the footage about that. Man, I, I don't care what was in the way. Cars, buildings, people. It, phew. And the bad enough with the tsunami, it washed things across the Pacific Ocean into America. And it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt and the Nile it flooded. But it was a good kind of because the floodings would bring fertile ground. Wash all the junk away, but that's what God said. Wash all the junk away. I'll just clean it. You know how I'll clean the land? Put a flood through. It shall come to pass in that day Pay attention. I don't know if this happened in Israel's time. This might be pure all. Amos 8 8. I read somewhere about Satan the dragon gulping up the Jordan River trying to blast them out of the flood. Don't you remember that? Revelation 12. 
I will cause the sun to go down at noon. And will darken the earth on the clear day. Now, is that where the sun goes goes dark? Is that when the moon turns into blood? I mean, is that a complete darkness? It doesn't say how long. But we've already got a mark in Revelation 12 of 8-8 eight, eight of that flood of Satan. And this is the sun where it goes dark. In the moon, it goes dark. And the stars, a third of them fall. I will turn your feast into mourning. Listen, in the in the tribulation, there's the temple, there's the feast. You know who's going to end all that? The Antichrist. The moment the desolation that lies desolate, when he comes out of that temple and proclaims, I am God, all the sacrifices stop, all the feasts stop. It has now been taken over by the man of sin. They won't bring, be able to bring their offerings anymore. So we're looking at a tribulation passage. You ain't going to go into Jerusalem happy-go-lucky. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Not with the Antichrist chasing you, the Jew. And this is also going to happen when Assyria comes. So Assyria, the Assyrians are a type of Antichrist. All your songs into the lamentation. How serious a lamentation is after Judas destroyed a lamentation is written by Jeremiah. I will bring up sackcloth upon your loins, uncomfortable cloth, and baldness on every head. And what they did is they shaved their heads. I've been in many Baptist churches, they go shaving their heads. They don't know the Bible. They don't care to learn. And there it is, black and white. Maybe their Bible has, I'm not going to look at the other Bible. The King James Bible says it bald this in their head. They weren't supposed to cut their hair. They were supposed to cut it so length. Unless they had leprosy, or the end of their Nazarite vow closed. Maybe they're going to get a leprosy. You know, the, the chemotherapy drugs causes you to, to lose your hair. I will make it as the morning that's not, you know, rooster time. That's sad of an only son. You only got one child. And that child dies. God says, that's what your morning is going to be like. Now, I think, I, I've gone through, I, I, I'm having a hard time right now being a widow right now. It's, but I can't imagine what it would be to have one. One of my children died. If I was even married. I couldn't imagine any time one of my children getting killed or dying. And I have been told, and probably some people, you know, they, they made it worse. I have been told, even Christian parents, where a child has died, it has caused a divorce. And it's not that they don't love each other. It's just that that whole some you know, some idiots out there. Oh, just, you know, trust the Lord. I'll never leave the earth. Say, you don't know what it's like to have a death. Now, I'm not going to speak for a death of a child because I don't know what that is. But I can speak of death of a wife. I can speak of a death of a parent. My dad is dead and probably in hell. I'm 99% sure of my own father's testimony. My dad is in hell today. Maybe one percent, somewhere, maybe. Not how he talked to me. He he laughed and joked during Sunday school, and I know the church they went to, and it was a good church then. It didn't get multi Bible, but I remember him saying when Grandma would take him, him and my uncle Billy would would crawl out the window of Sunday school 
and head down to the trains. Then ride the trains into the submarine place, which you weren't supposed to do. I know one time I witnessed into my dad, he came out, you know, evolution. I said, oh man, where'd you get that from? I don't, does it bother me my dad could be in hell? No. Why not? I witnessed to him, he was the very first person I witnessed to the day after I got saved. I was saved April 25th. I witnessed to him April, April 26th. I, yeah, every, every single card he got, he got a gospel track. He held in his sitting room on the porch a picture of his, his grandchildren holding the sign, Do not go to hell, only Jesus said. No. And there are things he's done to the family. That... you got to be careful when you're dealing with somebody, when you're dealing with death. Especially if you have not witnessed it yourself. And God said, God says, you know what? Let me think of something. Now, this is Almighty God. Okay? He knows it all. He says, okay, about the tribulation period. Let's see, how can, help me, Gabriel. How can I disguise it? You don't know. Okay, tribulation period is like a woman in travail about to give birth to a baby. Whoa. Whoa. What more pain can you get in that one? And we're talking about here sorrow and possibly the Antichrist and possibly the, the, the Jacob's truck. Okay, you say, okay, what sorrow can I uh, I got it. Your only child died. And the end thereof as a bitter day. You know that one? You ever have just a rotten day? I mean, it just everything. I've had days where, you know, I come out here. I'm about to read the Bible. I'm about to study. Things are going. I'm dropping things. I go pick something up. I drop two more things. And for every job I do, I got to do three extra jobs. And just, you know, you have one of them days, you're like, Lord, and you bow your Lord God, please, let's re-bless this day. You just ever have one of those days, and you get home, and it's like, oh, come on, just get over with it. May I wake up tomorrow and have a better day? That's what God's saying right now. And notice he uses the word, the end. That's a word that Jeremiah used. I'm not Jeremiah. Excuse me, Daniel used And that was talking about the end. We're talking about that summer fruit. That's the harvest. And when Jesus said, the end of the world cometh, we'll send off our angels. Scripture was, I don't read the Old Testament. It's boring. Or I'm going to read a modern Bible where they could change it all. I'm in the church and they read whatever they want to read. I'll be sitting there looking at my King James Bible. Like, how on earth did you get that? Okay, your Bible is supposed to be simpler. Now, I lost. Where are you reading from now? What verse are we at? Because your Bible does not make it clear. That's what you, I, don't, I can't picture these people. Have all, and, and my, they got all different Bibles. Like, Please don't work on my car. I'm going to work on my car. Use Chilton. Find what year my car is and what, what make of my car is and you get me a Chilton. Okay? If you're going to go out, I was, I was an assistant to lobster boats. Okay? You don't go down to the dollar store and say, okay, I need chart for the Thames River and that's the river where I come from. No, you went to the, to an official marine dealer to get an official United States Coast Guard chart in the Thames River. And you got that every year because it changes every, well, every year, every two years. You don't get a, a Mickey Mouse chart because you may end up on the rocks. You know what I mean? When, when you you got a cake mix. You got that box cake mix. And you're like, don't, don't go, oh, well, I think maybe if I add this or if I don't need the eggs. You're not going to get a cake. 
and you're not going to get the Word of God. Okay, move on. Are you ready for the, for the top 10 misquoted verses ever in the world? Number one, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And Smiley says, you can dive off the Empire State Building, hit the street, get run over by three buses and 4,600 yellow cabs. And get up and start walking. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you said you can do all things. But it's not what I no, not it's not that what you don't mean is what you're taking out of context. And there's another one. Uh, I forget what it is, but watch this one. Behold, the days come, future. Say it, the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. What land is it? Oh, you forgot? Come back up here to verse 2. The end is come, the end, come upon who? My people Israel. Who's he talking about? Israel. Alright, look at verse 5. Who's got the new moons and Sabbath? Israel. Got it? You sure? Okay. Because here's a verse misquoted. I'll send the land on the land. That's Israel. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but the hearing of the words of the Lord. So somebody will say, you know, I'll say, you know, they're not listening when I go preach on the street. Well, you know, God said there'll be a famine in the land of the, the word of God. First of all, he didn't say America. Second of all, what's it say? Hearing the words of the Lord. The Bible, the word, the scriptures will be there. It will be preached, because how can you not hear it? They're not going to listen. Now that is happening today. Now, like I said, I got upset today. We tried to start a new ministry, and, and they, had a DJ, they had a DJ already there. And you know what that DJ would have done like the one at the other one uh, in Daytona? They will play so the words of the Lord cannot be heard. Now, it wasn't his fault. He was already there. But I, I wasn't going to put up the fight no longer. But the music will distract the preaching. Israel's going to get to a time where the word of God's being preached and they're not listening. That's the church age for Israel. I have been told it is, I don't know how far the extent is, but it is illegal to go in Jerusalem even to witness. Never mind to preach on the streets. I don't know how true that is. There might be limitations that I'm not mentioning, that I don't know about. So you telling me a land where Jesus was, I'm going to pay money to go to the Holy Land. And there's a possibility while in the Holy Land, in the footsteps of the Catholic Jesus, Paul said there's another Jesus, publicly I may not be able to witness to his people. If I were, if I weren't be allowed, and if I went to the Wailing Wall, and let's say I preached in the, no amplification, but I preach in the voice I'm preaching right now. Do you think the Jews are going to hear me? The moment I mention Jesus, they're going to... Ch Listen, I witnessed the Jews before. And one Jew in particular told me, I was a young Christian, I didn't... I was quoting out of the New Testament, and that, that Jew said, we don't believe that book, or books. I was dealing with another Jewish person, and I mentioned, he goes, Listen, I don't believe in your Jesus, and we don't believe in your Jesus. So, but the hearing of the words of the Lord, the famine is, there will be preaching. The Jews are not going to be listening. I wonder what that will play. Ready? Are you ready? If we've been talking about the tribulation period, I wonder how that's going to play out with the 144,000. Or how about this one? 
Moses or Elijah. Uh, let me see. Let me let me think for a moment. Let me bring this to the church age. Let's say God would resurrect Finney or Tozer. Or I'm trying to think of one name and ain't coming to me. It's on the tip of my tongue, I can't think of it. But uh how about hey, how about ball players? Oh boy, wait, wait. I had the name and it went. Uh, he was a ball player. Billy Sunday. How about the the Whitefield? How about the Wesley? You say, why are you saying all these names? What about Finley? Finney? Finley. What about um, another name? The, the founder of the Salvation Army. I can't think of his name. You say, why are you saying these names? What if God were to resurrect these in the church age right now? And he's not going to. But what if he were to do that and they were to go on the streets, maybe in the streets of, of, of the churches, and start preaching on the streets in front of the churches? Maybe a Sunday. How many Christians do you think would actually sit there and listen? You know? I still can't think of another name. But, you, you know, you know I would think that today's Christian, if God were to do that, I believe they would walk up to them. I believe they would walk up to the, uh, the, the Whitefield. That's not what Jesus would do. We don't do that in our church. Why don't you go away? Why don't you go to another city and preach? Sound familiar? Talk about the big name of Baptist history. Probably a lot of the church wouldn't even know the name. I can't think of that name. But it's the hearing the words, and it's not America, it's Israel. Are you ready? This is my land, this is your land. From signing sea to signing sea. You ready? They shall wander from sea to sea. For in America, it's ocean to ocean. You're so stupid, you don't even know what an ocean is. From sea to sea, that is a Jewish reference. And that's your America the beautiful. From the north even to the east. Now you got to pay attention to north when it comes to Israel. There's always something out of the north that will come. They shall run to and fro. Who? Who? Israel. To seek the word of the Lord. Now they're seeking the word of the Lord. In verse 11, they're not hearing it. Now they've gotten to a point. All right, they're not hearing it in the church age. Now the church has been raptured, the Antichrist. Now they're looking for the word of God and shall not find it. When that Antichrist reveals himself, you guarantee the Jewish people are going to be searching the Talmud and the, and the, and the law and the prophets. And the Talmud, I said Talmud. And the catch you being. What do we do? What do we do? What's going on here? There is a man, and I don't know his name. God knows his name. And he went over to the sale preacher because that's where he believed is the place where God is going to 
send the Jews in refuge from the Antichrist. He's going over there and he has hidden. I don't know New Testament. I'm going to say the scriptures. Bible. He's going over to sell Petra and he has hidden Bibles all over. Sell Petra. Now when they get to sell Petra, they say they're going to seek the word of God. Now, have they been stolen? <laughs> That's something of interest. Next. Next. All right. Here's another problem with, with the church. In that day shall fair virgins... Uh -oh. Do you know the story about virgins in the Bible that the, that the church says is them? You know, you're the light of the world and we are the soul. I heard that the other day. No, you're not. Christian, you ought to keep your, your oil in your lamp. Who is, who is the prophet? Who is God speaking to? He's speaking to Israel. And fair virgins, plural. I don't think anywhere in the scriptures the church is referred to as, a, as a virgin. I, I don't think she's chaste. The church today sure ain't a virgin. She's adulterizing with Satan in the world. But they, fair virgins and young men, faint for third. You know, the young virgins and the young men, they're young. They, they get strength. They can run. They can play ball. They can climb. They can jump. They can ride bikes. They can't even get a drink of water. Jesus said at a well, I thirst and did not get no water. And the whole entire town got saved. I am the water of life. All right, here we go. You got to know your history now. You got to know it. We go through the Bible chapter by chapter in, in order. You're not going to get, okay, we did this one chapter in 30 sec 36 seconds. We're done. Hey, maybe we can do two. We don't do that. They swear by the sin of... O Samaria, that's the capital of Israel. So the whole chapter is about Israel. Verse 2 and verse 14. And say, Thy God, small g, O Dan. Now Dan is the city, north. That's as north as Israel you can get. What is that God that's in Dan that they swear by? That's the Mumu, the golden calf. You remember Judges? What Dan brought, he brought Mike, Micah's God, or Micah, Micah or Micah's God, and he brought the, the priest called the Father, with all the vestments. And they, sit, they set up in Dan the first, the first Vatican City before Jesus was born, before Jesus died, before the Roman Catholic Church or any Catholic Church was settled. And it's been the symbol of, here we go, the golden calf. The sin that Jeroboam caused Israel to sin. Okay, that's Dan the city. How do we know that? And the manor of Beersheba, that's the most southern city. That's where the other calf was put. So you see what we studied in Judges was not in vain. Those golden calves and that Catholic religion, remember we go back and go through it. That religion matched the Catholic Church, not picking on the Catholic Church, but the scriptures showed the Catholic Church and it's still there. Now they just adopted the, the golden calf. And maybe called it Pope Leo. Or Pork Chop. No, that's a pig. Maybe it holds a sign that says, Chicken spelled wrong. That's a sin. Even they, the golden calves, shall fall, and the people, and never rise up again. That's what God is going to say about religion. 
Oh, by the way, the Golden Calves, the Catholic Church, I probably said this. But you know, the official statement made by the Pope is called the Bull. I call it the Bull, the Bull, the Bull Caca, but that's not the word I use. I would say the BS. Anything the Pope says is BS. But the official word of the Pope is called the Bull, the Papal Bull. I wonder where they got the bull from. Oh yeah, every time he opens his mouth. So see, the golden calves are still around. They just they transformed themselves into Mary. And there are churches in the, in the Catholic Church, places in America, that every Catholic Church has a sacred... Uh, uh, why can I not remember the word today? They have a sacred, uh, an artifact. And th this is what their altar is built upon. There are Catholic churches where their sacred relic is, the, the they got the mother's milk of Mary from her breast. There's a church that's got the, the adult head of skull of John the Baptist, and then there's a church that's got the baby's infant head of John the Baptist. And St. Peter's Basilica, they got that big cast iron thing where supposedly it's built upon the bones of, of St. Peter. See, all the Catholic does is they bring the gods in and they rename them. The Baptists do it. They call it Resurrection Sunday which is real name called Easter, which the real name is called Esther, and I can't believe he's bringing Easter up again. Okay, Father's Day is coming up. Ah. And churches are going to honor the Father. They're going to give him a gift, maybe. And very few are going to mention God the Father. Happy birthday to you. We celebrate you were born in sin, but we never celebrate the new birth. What's wrong with this thing? I've never heard a Baptist church happy birthday for a new convert. Because when they get them saved, say this prayer, they don't tell them, hey, this is a very important date in your life. I tell him. I got a guy who got saved in this land, in this Congo, October 31st. D'Angelo. You got saved on the devil's birthday. 